Hello, good hey. morning, good afternoon, good evening for wherever you are around the world. Welcome again to Mounted Global Conference uh, 2021. I am here today to introduce Muhammad Abu Musa. Uh, Muhammad, I don't know if you know how Muhammad has been working on a new concept called Steer Campaign. Uh, he's providing uh, managed hosting services. I actually one of the regular contributors to our open source project. You can keep on seeing uh, Muhammad's name over and over and over and over, especially on email services. Uh, he is not only contributing to Mautic, but he's also been building out very, very large scale deployments of Mautic for software as a service services. He's been working with uh, financial technology companies, different marketplaces. So I'd like to hand it over to him. And uh, thank you for being here, Muhammad. Thank you, and, David. Uh, yeah, thank you for the introduction. Uh, in today's session, we will cover some of the uh, basic and intermediate concepts of uh, AWS SES, which is a simple email service out of Amazon and one of the most reliable and advanced email services on the internet. Uh, I will start by introducing uh, what is SES and then we will go into how to get started with it. We will have a live demo on how to uh, get started with SES, how to configure SES, SES uh, with Mautic, how to properly handle mouse management, how to test your configuration, and how to use something called configuration sets uh, out of uh, SES. So if you are an email marketer, you would have probably heard a lot of services, heard of a lot of services like MailDump, Centigrade, MailJet, and other uh, SMTP providers or email relay providers. SES is one of uh, one of these providers. What what is unique about SES? It's a very cost-effective email service. So the more you send, the less it would cost you. Uh, the pricing model of it uh, is is fantastic. The pricing is very low, while keeping a high reputation and great reputation of, of IBs or sending IBs. Um, it's mainly used for sending bulk emails. When we say bulk, we are talking about uh, thousands, millions, and billions of emails. Uh, those emails can be uh, either marketing emails or transactional emails, depending on your needs. The only downside of, of SES, it's, uh, it's a raw email service without any filters. Uh, you know, you like you better know what you're doing while you are using SES. Uh, SES compared to other services, for example, like SendGrid or Mailgun, and in, in, in these services, you would have a layer of intelligence that would filter out uh, like bounced emails in the past, redundant emails, block lists, bad reputation and domains. It would detect some kind of patterns within your email uh, with your email sending. But with SES, all of these services are not there. They are just sending emails. So you are responsible of uh, keeping your IP reputation good. You are responsible in complying with their policies. And they are very strict when it comes to policies. So the, this is what SES in general is about. Um, as for getting us started, as any email service, you have to add uh, a couple of DNS records to make sure that your domain complies with the sending rules. So uh, basically when you add a new domain or when you verify a new domain, you have to add a set of records uh, and make sure these records are added correctly to your DNS zone or your domain uh, so that SES verifies your domain. Otherwise, you will not be able to send or you will be able to send, but your emails will land on spam because of misconfiguration. So I will start uh, with verifying a domain, but I want to give a small tip about this. Uh, point is that uh, we don't usually verify a single email address unless you are going to send it from that specific address at all the time. This is one of the common mistakes that I've seen with a lot of my clients where they verify only one email address, say for example, email at domain.com, and then they start sending out from email one at domain.com, email two, email, um, five, for example, and all of these addresses are not verified in SES, therefore the sending would fail. Um, the issue here is that when you send and the sending fails, it will fail silently. You will find a trace of the error in the logs, but you will not see it in, um, in the interface of Modic. 
and most of the time customers would get frustrated because of the fact because they don't know if their emails are going out or not so I will start with this process and I will show you right now how the uh, interface would look like this is uh, the SES interface this is how it looks like so if you sign up for a AWS uh, account you just head down to services and search for symbol email service and you will go to uh, this one email, um, Amazon symbol email service and you will get to this dashboard in the dashboard you will have some statistics you will have the first step that we are going to do which is the identity management identity management and the identity management you have two options the first one is to verify a domain and this is what we are going to do and the other one is verifying a specific email address uh, that you are going to send from uh, again uh, I stress the point that we don't necessarily need to verify an email address we usually verify a domain um, when we verify a domain the first step you have to do is to enter the domain name that you are going to send from so for example if I'm going to send from leads.usersproof.com I will ask SES to generate DKIM keys DKIM is one way of um, the email systems or the spam filters would know that you are actually the one who is sending so what happens in the background when you send out an email uh, SES would add some keys to the uh, body of the email like to the header of the email and these keys will be calculated when somebody receives your email and then will be comparison between these keys to make sure that you are actually the, the true sender so always add the domain name okay and ask to generate DKMI settings now if I verify this domain I can send it from any email as long as it ends with at leads.usersproof.com so email one email two Muhammad David Ruz at leads.usersproof.com but I cannot send from the root domain so I cannot send from at usersproof.com so this is one of the common mistakes as well when you verify a domain or a subdomain you are allowed only to send from that domain or that specific subdomain not the top layer domain or any other domain so once I verify this I verify this domain you would see that I will have uh, this screen that gives me <coughs> some records to add now what you have to do here is you have to go to your domain registrar or DNS zone that could be GoDaddy Cloudflare uh, Amazon Route 52 whatever system that you use to host your DNS and you have to add these uh, records one of the common mistakes the most common mistake is in GoDaddy for example you don't have to enter anything after .usersproof.com so in GoDaddy I signed up for this domain I only have to add this part without the whole part like without the whole text so if I add the whole text it will not work out it will not verify so you only have to add this one this is the right part that you have to add of course when you add the DNS uh, text um, your domain will be verified okay so these are the three records like here three DKMI records and here we have the verification record so four records in general that we have to add at the bottom you will have an additional step to start receiving emails so suppose that you are sending from email at leads.usersproof.com and somebody hits the reply uh, your reply if you don't add this record your reply will not be collected unless you have another service that collects the emails on behalf of that specific subdomain right now in, in Mautic we do not collect replies out of SES I think this is a feature that we will write in, in the near future so we can get replies out of customers using SES but right now we don't have to add this record because it's not supported by Mautic yet okay so once you add the new domain you would see that the verification status is pending and you are not enabled uh, it's the domain is not enabled for sending so after I add it it will turn into green and you would see that you are able to start sending from the domain so this is the first step that you have to put in mind is how to verify your domain how to add the uh, verification DNS records a couple of, of tips on this specific topic um, there uh, are two 
uh, DNS records that SES does not require you uh, to add, but it's extremely important that you add them. One of the records is called the uh, DNARC record, uh, which is basically uh, a way to show that your domain, to show the, the spam systems or the spam filters, that your domain is compli it's compliant with the uh, DMARC uh, uh, standards, which is basically a way uh, that tells all the spam filters online that you are able to monitor complaints, you are able to monitor bounces, and that you have a policy on how to handle them, and that will rank your emails higher and make sure that your emails do not land on the spam folder. There are a couple of, uh, of tools online that you can use. One of them is Easy DMARC. Uh, it will give you uh, a text record as well, a DNS text record that you add to uh, your DNS and uh, that will increase the chances like increase the chances of your emails hitting the inbox uh, of your recipients as for the SPF record usually if you uh, for example if you have a, 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 a like a gmail account you will you will be asked to add a, a text record called SPF and in the SPF record we need to add SES uh, as part of the record, we can use something tool, some tools like uh, SPF generators to generate the policy. So, for example, I can see, for example, this one. You can check their SPF, and I can see what is the content. If you have something, it will show you like this tool, MX Toolbox. It will show you what kind of SPF policy you have. This is the SPF policy. Um, the SPF policy um, is basically a way to tell spam filters or other domains what is what they are the domains that you are sending out from and what are the IDs that you are sending out from. And these tips are not related to SES in specific. They are related to any email system. So whatever system you, you are using, always make sure um, that you have your SPF record configured. It, it usually looks like this. It starts with D equal SPF1, and then you will have the range of IDs that you have. For example, this is ID4. This is a domain that you are sending from, and a domain, and a domain, etc. Uh, so always make sure that you have the right SPF. If you don't have the right SPF, your emails will, um, will land in spam for sure, or uh, furthermore, they will have like um, a, a, a yellow box at the top on Gmail, that says this this email is, was sent from an ID that was not authorized to send it. It might be dangerous, that kind of thing. So always watch out for the SPF record and make sure that you are adding the right setting and the right text SPF record. Um, now uh, that we are configured the um, the domain, now we need to create access for SES. We need to get to get a username and a password. In order to configure um, SES, we can do it with one of two ways. The first one is to use the ABI, and uh, the second way is to use SMTP. Both of these methods are supported by Motic, so you can either send it through an ABI, through an ABI call, or using SMTP. Um, the main differences between these two methods, the ABI is usually faster, so you can send larger amount of emails with a single ABI call, uh, you can send within a single EBI call up to uh, 8,000 emails per request, or uh, depending on the limits of your account, you can define how many emails you want to send per batch. And it also auto adapts to your sending limit. So uh, I will show you how we can define that. So if I go to the sending statistics, you would see uh, that I have a limit of 500,000 emails per day, and I can send um, up to 160, uh, 160 emails per second. Now, if I try to send more than 160 per second, 161, the one will be rejected. So 160 will be sent, the one that is remaining will be rejected. And when I use the ABI method, uh, the ABI uh, calls will be adjusted to match this rate. So it will start sending 160 per second, so you don't have to uh, get into any trouble adapting to the speed of the sending. Um, 
as for SMTB, uh, it's it's mainly slower. It's uh, it's a retro way of, of doing the authentication or sending. Um, and usually we use the port 2857 uh, to configure it with Motif. Uh, I will show you an example on uh, how to do it in a bit, like how to create, how to configure Motif. But first, I need to show you how to create a user. Now, if we go back to SES, and we go to SMTB settings. This is to create a credentials for SMTB. You can see here the server name. You can see the set of, uh, of ports that you can use. One tip here, if you are using AWS to host your server, most of the time, port 25 is closed most of the time because SES is trying to keep the reputation of their EC2 or computing systems um, safe. So they block the port 25 but they open uh, the 465 and 587 and 2587 to send out from them. So when you go to SMTB settings, you just create SMTB credentials. You will be redirected to another page. And here you can give it a username. Once you create it, you will get a username and a password that you can inject into Motif. I will show you that this step in a sec. So this is the first way to create a user for SES. The, uh, the other way is you have to go to something called I am, which is uh, the user access and the identity management in uh, AWS. Then you have to create a new user. Give the username any username, we always give it a programmatic access because we don't use this uh, user to access the AWS console. We just use it for sending out emails within Motif. Then we give it a permission. Uh, here, you need to define what kind of permissions uh, you want to give to this specific user. And uh, the permission that we need is we attach it to existing policy. We look for SES full access. Just give it full access so you can start sending. Now, uh, one way uh, to customize this is we can give each user access to a specific resource or a specific domain uh, that we verify. So here we can customize this policy. It's a little bit advanced. We just need to configure this JSON object. Uh, as you can see here in the body of the JSON object, you can say, uh, I want to only allow this user to send out from a specific domain, and it's called a resource. So we take the resource, which is the domain uh, the domain ID. I will show you how to get the ID, how to extract the ID in a bit. And we add it to this policy so we can prevent this specific user from sending from any other domain except the one that we want. This is very useful because sometimes we have on a single, uh, on a single SES account tens of domains, and we want to make sure that um, any uh, username and password that we give out would access only one specific domain, and it sends out from one specific domain, and that's it. So in the, re in, in the policy matrix, we have to give the ID that we want to, uh, to restrict this uh, username and password to, and this ID can be generated, or you can get it from here, which is the identity ARN. Just take this one and add it to the policy and then verify your policy. This way you restrict the access, like the, uh, the credentials access to this specific domain. In these two steps, you verify the domain, you created a, a username and a password, and next you are ready to configure Motif. Um, the part where it describes how to do the configuration is located under the pounce management part and we will go through these steps one by one so uh, let me first start motif this is one of the cool hacks where you can have a, um, a development environment in your machine you use the dev i advise you to go and check out the development documents so you can see how you can contribute to motif how you can build a development environment on your machine and how you can test the new features 
in, in the future. Of course, you can get access to all the developers, all the contributors of Modic on the Slack channel, the forums, and any other channels that Modic has, and you will have a lot of support from the community, and always contribute, test, and try things out on, on the GitHub repo. Okay. Modic is almost done. Let's open it. while it's starting up Configure more for us. Hey, Mohammed. I am glad to see that I am not the only one that has issues with uh, DDEV every once in a while. Yeah, it always happens. It always happens. Sometimes, um, because I'm like in the middle of development of something, and you would like see something wrong going on, and like here and there, and sometimes it just hangs up. Sometimes, not all the time. Well, that's okay. I'm sure you'll get it going there. So take no your worries. time. Let's, let's use let's use the live version so you can see it. So when once you sign in, we go to configuration. And then you go to email settings. You have to choose one of two methods. Either you use the SES SMTP or the SES API. And you also have to define the region that you want to send out from. And the region can be found in this drop down, so you can know which region you are sending out from. We are using US East one. Once you configure it, you just add the username and password, and you are set to go. These are the configuration that you have. Um, now we have to uh, make sure that you always choose the right transport. Do not use the API to send out from uh, SMTP. Do not use the SMTP to send from the API call. Um, also, most importantly, do not use the other SMTP, other SMTP services if you are using Amazon because you will not get um, the bounce management. So bounces and complaints will not be reported into your Motec instance. This is very important. Um, once you configure, uh, once you configure your uh, Motec, you have to take note of two URLs. The first one is called mailer Amazon callback. So this is your domain name slash mailer Amazon callback. And the other one is your domain name slash mailer Amazon underscore API callback. These two URLs, keep a record of them. We will use them in the next step. So now we configure the domain, we configured Motec. We now need to tell Motec that there were co complaints and bounces. And SES or Amazon in general, do it through something called SNS, which is um, another service out of, uh, of AWS. 
it will not cost you a fortune at all. Uh, it's it's only it's a way to send notifications to different channels like emails, mobiles, or apps. It's actually used in so many uh, ways within S within AWS. So, for example, if you have an alert on a server that goes down, or you have a, a, a problem with one of the databases, you can get a notification in your email that the system is down, or etc. And uh, another way to use it is to report bounces and complaints from SES to other systems. In our case, we are using SNS to uh, report back bounces and complaints to Motic, so Motic can mark the contacts um, with do not contact flat, so they are not contacted anymore. In order to do this configuration, we need to do the following. So now we have the domain ready. We go to notifications. As you can see here, we have um, we need to select SNS topic to send out bounces and notifications too. So we edit the configuration. We always make sure that the email feedback forwarding is disabled. Email forwarding basically is if you have a bounce, an email will be sent from the bounce service to your email. And we don't want to collect these emails because we, we have another way to do it. And we need to create a topic. So I will show you in a bit how to create a topic. So we need topics that pushes back to Motic. In order to create these topics, we have to go to Amazon as well and type simple notifications service. We create topic from topic, create topic. We always choose the standard one. We don't care like if it's first in, first out, it doesn't really matter. Um, anything would work, okay. Uh, we call it Motic Test. And create topic. Now this is the first step. Once we are done, we go down to subscriptions. Create a subscription always make sure that you are using HTTPS. If your Motic is running on HTTP, make sure that you make it run on HTTPS. Then you add the URL, which is domain, for example, or let's let's pick a real one, slash mailer, slash, which is the one here, mailer, Amazon ABI, all that. Make sure that you have it this way, okay? Or if it's SMTP, just like this way. After you create the subscription, it will be created. You will see here that it says pending confirmation. If you have Moti configured properly and you click refresh, like hit F5, you would see that the configuration is confirmed. So always make sure that the subscription is confirmed. Now, any pound, should be reported to this URL and Motec will handle this uh, pounce or complaint and mark the contact within the system as do not contact. Now we created the topic, we created a subscription, we confirmed the subscription, we go back to SES, we, we edit the configuration, we choose the topic that we just created, we mark it on the complaints and bounces only, and we always make sure that we do not include the original headers and we disable this part and then save the configuration. For your information, um, the include original headers will include all the original headers that were sent and received so you can handle them or take the information out of them. We don't care about these headers, we only care about the email address uh, and the uh, lead ID within within Motec, which are these like these headers are set uh, when you send out an email, and based on that, Motec can process and uh, sort the information. So we save the configuration.
as you can see, once we are done, we can have the bounces and complaints notifications. For delivery, Motic does not like does not add an event to the event log of the uh, of the lead where we say like this email was delivered or not. But SES provides this feature to know to let you know that uh, the email was delivered or not. Okay. Now the configuration is complete. You can start using the configuration. So to summarize the steps in SES, you verify the domain, then you add the text uh, records, you add the DTMI the SPF, the DMARC, the curve, uh, then you create a user, whether it's an ABI user or an SMTP user, then you configure MOTIC uh, with the uh, username and password, then you create an S uh, SNS topic and you create a subscription, you make sure that you confirm the subscription, after that you are good to go, like when, when you connect the SES with SNS, you are good to go. One way to test your configuration is to create contacts on MOTIC using uh, these addresses. They, these addresses are provided by uh, Amazon and you can use them to verify the events. You can ver verify your setup. Just create an email, for example, with bounce at simulator.amazonfps.com. Try to send out an email to this address. Uh, the contact in MOTIC should be marked as bounce immediately once you send out an email. Uh, also complaints, submission list, and success. All of these should work fine without problems. So this is one way to do it. Uh, a tip on this specific thing, if you want to test like your server capabilities and to test if your configuration would work on high loads, you can, for example, uh, create um, a um, 100,000 addresses called success plus one plus two plus three, and that would work uh, up, for example, for a minion, then you add them to a CSV file, upload it to your Motic instance, and send out a campaign to see if the loads work, if uh, the configuration works, if it works like the whole thing works together without falling apart. Same thing goes to bounces, so you can test the traffic, you can test the uh, load of your server, you can uh, test the resources of your server, if it's going to go down when you uh, deploy it on a large scale. And all of that can be done for free on this um, Amazon simulator and without hitting the reputation of your IP address. Of course, anything that you send to the simulator should abide to the rules of your account, like sending volume, uh, sending rate, etc., uh, so that you can get real statistics and real understanding of how it works. Um, while we are on, on the testing and the reputation, it's always a good idea that you have uh, a, a check on the sending statistics at the bottom here you can see the deliveries the rejects the bounces etc and it's also a good idea to have a, an alarm when you have uh, like bounces a number of bounces hits a specific threshold you get an email that you are getting to this threshold so you can boost the sending you clean up your list for example or understand what is the cause of the issue there is also the reputation dashboard where it shows if you are within uh, the service limits or you are under review, etc. So these are the two places that you have to really focus on and monitor every, uh, every other day, for example. Now that we have everything configured, you need to go to production. In order to go to production with SES, you have to start a support ticket. You have to talk to Amazon, tell them uh, that you are actually a legitimate sender that you will not hurt the reputation of their IDs. You are not a spammer. You are not sending false data. You are uh, sending to people who actually requested to get information from your side. So if, for example, let me change the region so you can uh, see the message. So this is a fresh account. If you go to sending statistics, you would see that I am in a sandbox mode, which is the default mode in SES. You have to request uh, through a support ticket uh, that you go live with this, with this account. It's always a good idea when you send out the support ticket to Amazon to, to get out of the sandbox mode is to let them know or show them the evidence that you have um, leads and these leads explicitly requested uh, 
uh, you to send them out emails. This evidence could be your website, which includes lead generation forms. It could be like uh, any any form or any paper or any kind of way where you have a consent receiver uh, to give you their email address and to give you the permission to be contacted. The second thing you, uh, that you need to show is samples of templates, like uh, to show them that you are serious in your sending, you have uh, good designed email, you have good designed content, your content matches your brand, your content matches uh, the products that you sell. And also it's important that you mention that you use Motic to handle bounces and complaints and to comply with their sending uh, guidelines. And if you do all that right, most of the time you will get approval within a, do, uh, a day or a two and you go to production. Um, one thing that you have to notice, if your count rate raises above a specific threshold, usually three to 5%, your account will be blocked. And these guys are serious, like Amazon are serious. Um, they will block your account and you will not gain access to it again. And if you fail to verify on one region, sometimes it affects uh, their decision to get verified on another region. Uh, so watch out for the sending patterns you create, the sending, uh, the sending practices that you have and in, in like this step in general applies to any email sending service not just SES. Now we want to talk about a, um, a more advanced uh, way of configuration um, this is usually used by companies or large companies that they need that they need to, to split like split their sending uh, IDs for example one ID will be used for sending email marketing uh, another ID will, will be used for uh, sending uh, notification emails. Um, like for example, one ID for one domain, another ID for another domain. So it depends on um, how you how the company wants to divide their ID pool, uh, how they want to send out emails. For example, sometimes you have uh, um, a PHP application like Drupal or WordPress that sends out from a specific ID address and another ID uh, is used for Motic, so we need to use the configuration set. The configuration set is located in the uh, dashboard under email sending. So you create a configuration set, you give it a name, for example, let's say marketing emails. Oh, wait, I have to erase this. When you create a configuration set, it's like creating a template, like a container for the configuration that you have. Now, if you have IDs, if you have dedicated IDs, you will find the IDs that you own under the sending ID pool, and you can define this configuration set, um, like you, how many IDs belongs to this configuration set. And when you use this configuration set, uh, all the emails that you send out will be sent from this specific ID or uh, set of IDs. And this is one um, useful feature of the configuration set. Another useful feature is um, to use uh, the event destination. So let's say that you want to monitor uh, the bounces and the complaints and deliveries, etc. Uh, and you want to add this, uh, like this information into another database, or you want to analyze your sending patterns into another system like CloudBoard, or you want to just post the information to another system other than Motic. You can use SNS, which is the same thing that we configured for the domain. Here it goes into more details, like you can get more information. Uh, one piece of advice, do not mix configuration sets with SNS for the domain because the, uh, like, sorry, don't make them the SNS topic that sends out from the configuration set and the one that sends from the domain use the same callback URL uh, because uh, the content of these uh, two methods will conflict and you will not get the right quotes. David? So, uh, Adding adding a destination is very important because it allows you to uh, like even to run extra functionalities on other systems to monitor the reputation of your domain or even to collect statistics about your sending patterns, how many emails, what is the status of each email that you send out to, or you can use it for 
uh, dashboards to get numbers on the sending, like the sending behavior of your domain. So uh, configuration sets are very important for this specific thing. Um, in order to have it ready, you just have to add to your headers, and usually this is done in multi configuration here, where you have XSES configuration set, and you can give it any custom name. So here we have a custom configuration for a specific client, and based on that, we get the configuration set. So we decide which IDs they use, we decide how we collect the events, and we decide how we analyze their data. So that's it for me today. Uh, right now we are working more on getting more features from SES injected into Motex. We have some bugs here and there that needs to be fixed. So if you have any kind of confusion, testing, you would love to contribute back to the community through SES. Just give me a message and hopefully we will see you soon using Motex more and more. Thank you. That was fascinating there, uh, Mohammed. Thank you very, very much for that. Uh, we have a couple of questions uh, from the audience there, and I want to begin with a uh, discussion about warming up an IP address within uh, AWS SES. Okay. Warming up, it's um, a process where you uh, make sure that the new ID that you purchase or the new ID that you get is getting recognized by other email services and domains. And this usually would work with an exponential algorithm where you start sending the slow and you speed up um, day after day and week after week until you hit a specific reputation and other uh, email services gets to understand you. The, you the, the warm up process usually starts with making sure that you have all the right DNS records configured in the right place. Then we start out with a strategic process of identifying the domains that we like, the domains and the emails that we trust the most that they will interact with our email. So say you have a list of a thousand emails, I would select first the first 25 emails that I am almost certain that they will open and click on my emails. And then I start sending out on a schedule, like 10 emails on the first day, um, all of them goes to for example, Gmail. Um, they will interact with it. Gmail will start recognizing my ID. Then I will send to Outlook. Then I will send to another domain, another domain. And while I do that, I start mixing the uh, domain names that I sent to. So let's give it a, a, a real example. 1,000 emails, 250 emails that I make a subset. And the first day I send out to 10 emails on Gmail, 10, 10 emails on Outlook, and 10 emails on another service and that's it so 30 emails from that id on the first day the second day we do 60 the second day uh, the day after we do 120 then like we start growing and growing from growing and while we are doing that we always notice and monitor the bounces and complaints um, a warmed up in, uh, id would 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 follow this this pattern now ses has an automatic id warm-up process and that process works when you send out um, an address, like uh, you send a flood or patch of emails, uh, they will throttle your specific ID address and then flood the other emails to other IDs that they already warmed up. And that uh, will make sure that your ID address will be warmed up um, until you reach something around 15,000 emails that you send out. So this is how the process works. You can do it manually and, uh, or you can use uh, the SES warm-up services, which is already part of the uh, dedicated ID service. Wonderful. Thanks for that detailed uh, explanation there. Another question from Wagner uh, was, since you had disabled the simple notification service, the SMS notifications for deliveries, uh, how do you go about getting the delivery rate percentages for statistics? Yes. Uh, this is this is like this is a feature that we hope to see on in Motex soon, but it's not planned yet. Uh, what we do usually for deliveries, we have a specific SMS topic that feeds a Lambda function, and that Lambda function would store the, uh, the data into, for example, a DynamoDB or a MongoDB, anything that is just uh, like a JSON-based database, and you can do the calculations on that. Um, there, there's a system uh, called SES Stats, that's DHB based, it would collect all the events using uh, like for delivery, so you can calculate the delivery rate. 
I always advise that you have a configuration set with a certificate anastopic, and that as anastopic would keep something like firehose or a lambda function, so you can do your calculations. Great, great. Uh, Marcel had a, uh, another question for you. Um, can you elaborate a little bit on that, I believe on the stacking of success plus one at simulator.amazon SES, uh, okay. success plus two, so, can you just elaborate on that definitely, one? Definitely, definitely, definitely. So, uh, there are emails called role-based emails, so uh, it works on Gmail, it works on Outlook, and it works also on the simulator. So say that you want to test out um, an email. So, for example, this is my email. Let me show you an example. This is my email on Gmail. It's it's also the same email if I say plus one at gmail.com or at more uh, plus motic at gmail.com. Uh, all of these emails are one email. Like in the eyes of gmail.com, all of these emails are one email. The same thing goes for the simulator. But in the in, in eyes of Motic, all of these emails are different emails, like they are different identities. So if you want to send out to a large list, for example, 100,000 emails, all you have to do is go to Excel or Google Sheets and just do this kind of concatenation where we say like email one, email plus one at domain.com, email plus two, plus uh, etc. And then you add them as a CSV file and you upload them to Motic and then you send out uh, a large batch to test out if, if the system actually works as expected. Okay, that makes uh, perfect sense there. Uh, thank you for that. Um, you know, there's another question that Wagner had, is since usually you have your, um, your at domain.com email address and if you also use SES for transactional emails for that domain, What's the best practice in that particular case? Configuration sets. Use configuration and sets. One for transactional and one the other one and the other one for marketing. And can you possibly elaborate on that a little bit? Yes, sure. So, uh, if you have the same domain, if you have the same domain, and you want to send two types of emails, one the transactional and the other one is the marketing. Usually the reputation of the marketing uh, IDs are lower because people tend to unsubscribe, report you, complain about you. But the transactional emails, they are more straightforward. Somebody wants to reset the password, uh, request a fund, contact support, etc. So what we do is we have two different IDs, two different dedicated IDs. One maps to uh, the marketing emails and we use a configuration set and we use a dedicated ID on the marketing configuration set and the other one will be used for the transactional with a dedicated ID. And when you send out the transactional email, which usually it originates from system like WordPress, custom apps, Laravel, Drupal, etc., you just add the header of that specific configuration set. And in Motic, where you send out the marketing messages, you just add the configuration set of the uh, marketing part. So the same domain is sending out from two different ID addresses with two different reputations. So the reputation is calculated on the domain level as a text, like a domain name, and on the ID that it sends from. So, um, and like it, it would not conflict, like this would not conflict with that. So configuration sets is the way to do this kind of separation. Okay, is there a recommendation for doing that one way or another, meaning is, are you best off uh, possibly using a subdomain from Maltec versus doing it that way with configuration sets? Is there a wisdom for what the best practice is that way? If, if you have like if you have a budget to have two dedicated IDs, there is no difference by by using the subdomain or the same domain. But if you don't have two dedicated IDs and you are using the same uh, shared ID, uh, it's it's a good practice to have a separate domain or a subdomain, so that subdomain reputation does not get affected by your main domain reputation, and that way you make sure that your domain reputation always stay the same. So what we usually do is we have, for example, spearcampaign.com and spearcampaign.net, and we send out the marketing emails from spearcampaign.net. So if the reputation goes bad, our main domain would not be hurt. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, and you would want to make sure you do that. That's a key key thing there. Yeah, that's an under the understatement of uh, the session right there. Uh, 
how, how do you go about monitoring your um, IP reputation and your account reputation? I mean, how do you keep your account healthy for sending? You briefly, uh, briefly showed something there. Yes. Okay. Uh, Now, first of all, you have to understand that uh, AWS team, uh, they are like cops over you. So if you do anything wrong, they will immediately block your account and put you under provision. So this is the first production line that you have. Um, you also have these metrics. So you can have these metrics, like you can check these metrics uh, on a daily basis or a weekly basis, or you can create something called the cloud watch alert, uh, which would send you out an email if um, you have a problem with the number of deliveries or number of bounces or number of projects and you can define it on a low threshold like something from like one percent two percent for bounces and for rejects something point like half percent and complaints for half percent and based on that you stop the sending so one one way to understand uh, the pattern is we leave um, a window like in, in Motic we configure the cron job and we leave a window of Three minutes or five minutes or 15 minutes depending on how large your your mailing list is so in case there's a problem in the sending we can stop it also there's a practice that i personally use is uh, a queuing the queuing feature i do not send immediately with motic i make it a queue and then i define the batch size manually so in case there is something wrong with the with the mailing list i can monitor it and i can stop the sending by stopping the cron the cron job um, all of these dashboards together can give you an understanding of how the reputation would look like and you can also here check the reputation rate from uh, SES within SES within the premium services of SES you can uh, buy a monitoring service but it's quite expensive it, it costs around uh, $1,500 uh, a month uh, for monitoring uh, so it, like if you're sending if you're sending um, Less something less than five million emails a month. I think it's pretty expensive. Um, so these are the ways where you can do the reputation management. Also, it's very important that any um, contacts that you, you import into Motic uh, that you make sure it's always a clean uh, list, and you can do some kind of cleaning using the services like you know, Never Bounce that gives you um, the status or a prediction on the status of your your email. Great, and I think this may be the uh, last question for right now. Is is can I receive emails on SES? Uh, does Mautic support that feature? Uh, no, um, you can you can receive emails. That's correct. If you configure your domain and you add the uh, receiving the MX record, the receiving bot, you can receive emails. Um, but unfortunately, we did not try the code yet it's it's within my pipeline like i this is a feature that i really like that i want to have within motic um where you seek out emails but right now we don't have it within motic if like if anybody would like to program it i'm more than happy to give you the guidelines like i know all the steps that needs to be done but i don't have the time to write it myself um so what happens is when you configure inbound uh, like the inbound uh, mx record uh, we will create an SNS topic for receiving emails, and once you uh, create that topic, it pushes uh, a payload uh, or like a JSON payload that contains the topic line, the headers, and the content, the body of the email, and you can store it anywhere you like, and you can even like store it in S3 bucket and then consume it on on a later time. So yes, you can receive, you can handle it, you can forward the received emails to any other address, you can store it to Motic. But it's not unlimited yet. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for thank that you. presentation and that uh, deep dive into it. Um, and thank you very much for your, all your contributions to Mautic as well. Thank Keep you. on seeing the, lots of commits from your uh, your name comes up every once in a while and it brings a big smile to my face. So thank, thank you across the board. You. Any any last things you want to add in here? Well, I, I would love to encourage everybody who is watching us right now to contribute to Modic, whether it's writing code, testing code, writing documentation, or doing events like this, preaching about the system would be great. That's like that's my advice. Always join on to Slack, get, get questions, answer questions, and participate in the community. 
All right. Well, thank you.